is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Water Change Wednesday. I'm joined with Kevin Kelly from Brooklyn Hardscapes yet again. Uh, we are here to talk about algae. That is going to be today's primary focus, but with a possible scape, well, scape demonstration there. It's so weird looking at it backwards. <laughs> it confuses me. So, yeah, a possible aquascape de demonstration if, uh, if we have time, depending on how involved we get with algae. Um, but yeah, so real quick before we get into it, I just want to let everybody know our plant mist sale is still continuing. Um, basically every day there is a sale on a particular plant that's either one to three dollars. Um, it updates every night at midnight, so you could take a look at that on the website, h2oplants.com. Um, also there's 25% off until uh, Christmas using the code PLANTMAS at checkout. Save 25% off the rest of your order. That includes plants, fertilizers, driftwood. Does, it just doesn't include hardscape um, packages. So, uh, we got some people filing in here. Chris's Fish Rooms, HC Aqua, uh, Low Light Aquatics. What's going on, guys, on YouTube? Uh, MK Films says, how do you get rid of a foggy water? Uh, you're talking about suspended algae or are you talking about uh, bacterial bloom? So is it a white substance or is it a green substance? Pretty much. Just want to stop by and say hi before I take off. Have a good night. Thank you, Tori, so much. Do you know a place where Dragonstone is local? I, I mean, I got Dragonstone, Chris. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how local you are to New Jersey, but we got uh, we got Dragonstone. All right, we're going to take a look at some Instagram questions. If you're not following us there, we are streaming as well there. Uh Jalen says you two are sexy. That's nice. Thank you, Jalen. <laughs> Just got my moss. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Blackbeard algae sucks. That is. Non-algae questions okay? Yeah, uh, we're welcome, uh, open to any questions, but today we're going to try and focus on algae as much as possible. So if you have algae questions, uh, send them on in. We will be sure to answer them. Before we start off, uh, I'll uh, answer uh, MK's uh, question. I uh, just got new plants and a new ATI filter from the aquarium co-op. Sounds like you have a bacterial uh, bloom. That's no big deal. Uh, do 20% water change every day. Um, make sure you use water treatment. It's just uh, bacteria, either like a new introduction of bacteria or your older bacteria uh, working out its, its position in the tank. Uh, give it a couple days, give it a couple weeks. Uh, sometimes it takes uh, about a week to get completely clear. Uh, if you already have an established colony, then it should take about three or four days to disappear. I second all that. Oh, and by the way, somebody had said nice H2O plan sticker. You can now buy these on the website. These are three inch uh, glossy nice stickers. And then we also have um, these nice clear ones that um, you can put on the tank. They're actually clear vinyl. They peel off, and it's clear with just the logo there. If you want to buy them, they're on the website. So get them while they're in stock. Um, Before we start getting really into uh, the algae, one of the things that I want to talk about, of course, is information on Facebook and the Internet. Uh, make sure that you, you come from a reliable source when you're getting information on how to fight algae, why it's being caused. Uh, I, I think that everybody should... Uh, start at the basics. There's, I, I believe, think, still well, archived. There's uh, yeah. Rex Griggs' uh, website has been archived somewhere. Uh, it's the best place to start on what causes algae. Uh, yeah, somebody asked what triggers algae to begin with. So, uh, basically, what Kevin's trying to say is like, um, we see a lot of people constantly asking on Facebook groups and elsewhere, like, "Help! I have this problem." And then everybody chimes in with a bunch of different things. Not It's not always one uniformed response, essentially. Like, it's not, oh, it's definitely your lights. It's like one person will say, oh, it's your lights. One person says, oh, you're not running CO2. You need CO2. The other guy says, oh, you know, you're, you're dosing too much or you're feeding. <laughs> so, so the question, the answers are all over the place. And um, Kevin had a recent... Are we going to even talk about that? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Can... All right. So Kevin has, has a client that... Four clients. Four clients um, that he deals with. And this one guy, I guess, just let his tank go. Is well, that... the one guy let the tank go, and the other three guys have gotten really bad information off of the Internet. Right. Uh, everything from 
CO2 is going to kill your fish. So even though you're, you know, you got a quad T5 on a 60p, uh, two foot by 12 foot by 12 foot tank, uh, you're not going to use CO2 anymore and not fertilize because fertilize will kill a shrimp and CO2 kills his fish. So for the past three months, he's been growing nothing but blackbeard algae. Okay. It's uh, he just took his word for it from the Facebook site. Yeah, so basically, you know, whenever you have questions, and that even comes down to us, you know, asking us questions, always fact check people, um, you know, or get second opinions. Oftentimes, you know, people are speaking from experience. Not all the time is that experience going to be the same uh, thing that you're dealing with. It could be something completely different. You know, we can only make assumptions based on what we know and what we've experienced, but every tank can be different. You know, and uh, there are some things that are truly factual and other things that are myths that are, have just been in the hobby for a really long time that I've, you know, found over the years that, you know, people say certain things and meanwhile has no factual basis, um, you know, oh, so yeah, there's a lot there. There's a lot. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just remember to fact check people despite of any sort of stature that they may have, whether they've been doing this for 30 years or, or one year. Um, yeah. A lot of questions build up. Yeah. Well, that's good. We want questions. So, um, well, let's call, let's go to what causes algae. That was, uh, the first question that I saw that, uh, we should kind of set it off with. So, uh, what causes algae? Well, there's a bunch of different families of algae and each family prefers its own environment and how it thrives. Uh, everything from black beard algae to string algae to cyanobacteria, which is blue-green algae. No. Um, sometimes things can happen that you can't have any control of. Uh, I was just talking to one of my clients, actually. I was having a real problem with uh, protein uh, buildup on the surface of my water. I was getting this, this weird algae outbreaks. I don't get algae very often, uh, except for black beard algae, because I'm a light addict. And uh, looking around, couldn't figure it out. Weeks going by, turned out they were they blew up a bridge, uh, two blocks from my house, and they were doing the cleanup. And the amount of crap coming into my apartment was just causing a nutrient boost in my aquarium. There's just no way I could fight it or win. So eventually, I just gave up and tore down the tank. Sometimes that's the only answer because it wasn't going to end. Yeah. So you know, there depending on the type of algae, you can have a light imbalance. So either you have too much light, too little light. Your light's too close to your tank. Your light's too far away from your tank. Could be any combination of those. Your light's on for too long. Your light's not on for long enough. Um, now there's some people that say nutrients can cause algae. Well, that's normally the basis. You have an right. excess or a lack of. I guess is. The easiest way to explain it, but normally the causes can be anything from. Well, I don't. I mean, you got, you got to do a deductive process when you're trying to figure out what's causing your algae. You identify the species of the algae, you find out what they like the most, and then try to solve that. If that doesn't work, or if you have a multitude of different algaes, you begin eliminating whatever you think is an imbalance. Uh, definitely, I, I always start off with light. Light light seems to be the. If you're not running CO2, light seems to be the most. Uh, what would you call it? The most um, common factor. Yeah, the most common factor in algae uh, problems. Um, but we were just discussing this before also. Um, when you make a, a change to, let's say you change your lighting because you identify that you have a type of algae that's growing and all of a sudden, you know, you determine, oh, my light's on for eight hour, uh, 10 hours a day. I should cut it down to eight. You cut it down to eight, and in two days you expect to see a difference. That's not going to happen. It takes time for these things to play out. Um, it could, you know, it takes. Uh, normally, algae doesn't develop overnight. It it will normally take several days to weeks to actually like exist in, in a form that you can see it. So it's not going to immediately eradicate itself just because you decreased your light. Um, it's there, and it's not going to essentially remove itself without you removing it by hand. And then hopefully it doesn't grow back because the whatever factor was causing it in the first place is now adjusted. So when you make these changes, you should really, you know, take your time with it, let it do its thing for, you know, at least a week or two. And then if you don't see any change, then proceed with the next parameter that you're going to try and mess with and adjust. Well, the three, the three things that I check out first is I do, is it the light? How often am I cleaning my filter? 
And the filter tubes. People forget about cleaning filter tubes, especially if you're using a canister filter. Cleaning filter tubes? What's that? <laughs> so cl clean your filter tubes. I mean, please, for all that that's, that's holy in this world, clean your filter tubes. It's where some of the nastiest of the nasty likes to hang out. So even if you're cleaning your filter, you're still having algae growing in there and spreading throughout your tank. Uh, I like uh, black beard algae, I like to call it dirty tank syndrome. Or no, dirty filter syndrome, excuse me. Normally, one of the causes is that you have a dirty filter uh, and too high a flow. Uh, flow is definitely uh, a big part and a lot of hair algaes, I can, I, I can tell you that much. Either mm. too much or too little flow. Yeah, Especially, and diatome. Diatome yeah. algae, one of the easiest ways to get rid of that is just flow. And then the next step, step I always go to, and if Christian's on, he's going to make fun of me, but uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of blackouts. Uh, do a blackout, three-day blackout. It normally clears up the algae. If you do have some kind of imbalance, it's easier to figure out as you're starting over. Uh, mm. Cut the nutrients in half, turn your light cycle down to six hours. So, uh, Petite Fish says that I have blue cyano, and even though I clean it, it comes back in just two days. Cyano is one of the hardest, hardiest... Uh, Organisms on the planet, it can, uh, I believe, go uh, dormant for like ten thousand years. It, it is the uh, it is the algae that helped form the Earth that we know today. So without it, we wouldn't exist. So yeah, because it was nastier than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but I found blackout. Do a blackout. Uh, start with Chemi Clean and uh, heavy aeration. Three day blackout. Fifty percent water change normally clears it up. If it doesn't clear it up. Then you have to move on to erythromycin, which is uh, an antibiotic, but try to find another solution before you go to antibiotics. And if you do use antibiotics, complete the cycle. You don't want that mutating and turning into something nasty. Yeah, so I've found that ChemiClean works. I hadn't had to do everything that Kevin just mentioned after ChemiClean, but if it's, uh, if it's persisting even after you use ChemiClean, which it, it, in my experience killed it in two days, mm -hmm. like it literally wiped it out. Um, do everything else that Kevin said, high aeration, all that is good stuff. Um, I've never done a blackout, so I can't speak from experience. I think that's me. I'm getting a bunch of texts. But, um, yeah, that's. I, I would look into Kevin Clean. That, that destroyed her really quick for me. Um, I've heard you can put a ratio of one part uh, bleach to uh, 19 or no one part bleach slash vinegar to 19 parts of uh, water when cleaning out a tank is that okay I don't know about cleaning out a tank with it um, I know people use vinegar but they try and make sure it doesn't hit the water I if, would not mix vinegar and bleach don't do that well no no, no. They, they said um, like bleach and water or vinegar and water do vinegar just you can do straight vinegar rinse it off real well and then you're done yeah as long as the tank's empty if there's fish in it you can't do that um, you would want to, I mean, I've seen people though, they, they'll like try and take off the buildup on the top of their tank with like vinegar and a brush. And then like, they just try and make sure nothing leaks down into the tank below. Uh, you, you could be tricky with that. <laughs> uh, theory of says I'm trying to fight some algae. Yeah. Algae is uh, tricky to do. You gotta, you gotta try and, uh, identify it first. Uh, what do I or what I do to treat algae, which is a fish or shrimp safe solution, is to do a 75% water change and add boil, boil, boiling bleach to the tank. What? What I do to treat algae, which is a fish and shrimp safe solution, is do a 75% water change and add boiling bleach water to the tank. That does not sound safe. No, it does not. <laughs> that does not sound safe, <laughs> Jalen. Uh, you don't want to add energy to something like uh, bleach. Chlorine gas is a real thing. Uh, yeah, I think that might be a troll comment. I don't know. Any advice on a way of cleaning a flower horn tank? Mine bites and needs equipment so I don't get hurt. Uh... Yeah, uh, other than putting in a partrition and kind of forcing the flower horn for a little bit to be on one side of the tank and then... Let them out and then do the other side of the tank. Uh, that would be the only way I could think of yeah. to or, do some cleaning. Or get somebody in there with like a net and like try and scare them away from wherever you're doing your stuff and hopefully he leaves you alone. Also maybe feeding him like a couple hours beforehand. Maybe he'll be like a little full and not want to mess with you. 
That, that could be. Uh, they also have elbow length um, gloves you can get. Yeah, that would, that would probably be a good thing. Or use, um, I see Joey used a uh, shower scrubber on like a pole that you can use to clean. Oh yeah, that's for short people though, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. What is the best way to help plants fast? I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, well, plant, you mean plant, plants. Well, it depends on the plant. I mean, you have the, the classic uh, at an angle and then lift, I guess is what they're asking. That's the quickest way you can plant something. Uh, uh, somebody says, I got brown algae. Any advice? Uh, there's a couple different kinds of brown algae. Is it slimy or is it stringy? Does it look like deer antlers or does it look like string? Yeah, there's a couple different kinds. Okay, let's take some questions on the YouTubes. Got a bunch building up here. All right, let's see. My plants have little gray looking hairs all over the leaves. Is that black beard algae? So if they're little gray hairs and not like a brush, um, think of like a bush. That's what black beard algae looks like. It looks like a little bush. It has numerous fibers and it's almost in like a half of a circle type shape. That is black beard algae. If it's in strings, just you know, little strands, that's staghorn. Or is it be staghorn? Yeah. Uh, there's another kind though, there's right? There's a brown string algae as well. There is, right? I have brown algae growing all on my white sand. How do I stop it? Um, so you can do a couple of things. You can uh, manually stir the substrate using like either a pencil or you could use uh, like a, a chopstick. I've seen some people use any type of skewer, bamboo skewer he uses <laughs> to get in there and mix it up. Uh, you could get fish or other creatures that turn over your substrate, so things that filter sand through their gills, like uh, coolie loaches, I think, do it. Um, some pygmies, right? Pygmy corridors? I mean, a lot of or corridors. Or corridors in general. Yeah. Um, Malaysian trumpet snails seem to be my favorite. I actually have it's them. my favorite. I have them in the goldfish tank back there, which we're going to be doing an update video on here very shortly. But I have not had to clean that sand at all. It is still as white as it is the first day it went in there. And that's partially because of the goldfish, you know, digging it up and, and all that. But also the Malaysian trumpet snails are constantly turning it over. Um, a lot of people look at Malaysian trumpet snails as pests. But I don't find that to be the case. I like them. I like them too. They're good. They don't, they don't mess the plants. Uh, they keep the substrate uh, aerated if you're not using aqua soil. Uh, also, sand needs to be moved around often. Uh, you don't want it to get compacted. Uh, it's, it, it really is. It's, it's the easiest way to get cyano, in my opinion. Uh, dirty sand seems to just attract cyano. And, uh, so every time you do a water change, make sure you go in there, you stir up the sand, and while everything's still up in the water column, you just suck it out. Yep. Yeah, you could use your uh, siphon and get it down in there and like, you know, really like stir it around and uh, break it up. Where do you get those plant shelves? Are you talking about the stainless steel ones? We typically sell it right now. We're out, but we should have some soon. If you're looking for one in particular, message me. I might be able to help you out with it. Green hair algae growing in Java moss. Any solution or, or toss it? Or uh, total just, loss? Uh, I just say with a little peroxide. The moss will get damaged, uh, but if you're very gentle with the peroxide, uh, it'll come back. Uh, Java moss is one of the fastest growing mosses. You shouldn't have a problem. Or you can take a comb or a brush. Oh, sorry. <laughs> or you could use this toothbrush. Yeah, toothbrush and just comb it out just, and figure out yeah. what's causing it. Comb it out. All right. Um, I'm going to buy those stickers. Nice, MK. Let's see. Oh, Jake. Come on, guys. Give some likes. Thanks, j -Rim. Like that video. That's right. Uh, let's see. Oh, God. All right. We have a ton of questions built up. Uh, Why is Jake deleting Christian's messages? What is Christian saying? I don't know. Gramps? Yo, so I got two stingrays. Yo, I got two stingrays on a 33 long and got algae pretty bad. Should I just start using the CO2? Uh, oh, stingrays, the clip on lights, I'm guessing you're talking, not stingrays, the long light. Oh, that's where my head went to. Yeah. <laughs> I was not, like, whoa, 33 too small. Yeah, I'm like, wait, why, uh, why do you have those huge? <laughs> um, 
A 33 long, that's 12 inches tall? Yeah, like 10 or 12 inches. I think that uh, you should probably just go down to one stingray and let your plants grow in a little bit before you add any more. Add more uh, plants. Add more plants. Definitely add more plants. Uh, I'd have to take a look at the scape to tell you what's going on. One of the hardest things with these live streams is trying to answer questions, but I'm not actually seeing what you're asking about. Um, increase water flow, do weekly water changes, take them to light to one stingray. That's probably the best answer. Hmm. Uh, Kevin, what, if any, signs of iron overdosing have you seen? Have you ever had issue with hygro pinafita? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, when I first started uh, using that plant a couple years ago, I, I mean, hydro pin is very hard to keep. Uh, it gets, but it tells you what the water is going on. As soon as you see those pinholes in the leaves, that's that's how you know. I, I like to use it as a, a health uh, monitor for a lot of my aquarium uses. Uh, the color of the leaves, the way that it grows. Uh, it's not a typical stem plant either. That grows very different. It'll grow on anything. Yeah. Absolutely anything. If it's really, really green, um, especially in a high-tech tank, you know that you need to up your nutrients, probably uh, iron. Uh, definitely using better lights when you have it red. Uh if it's super, super red, uh, it lets me know that maybe my light is a little too bright or, again, I'm dosing too much uh, because it is a, a nutrient hog. But it's a great plant. You can grow it immersed. You can grow it in low-tech, high-tech. Uh, it, it'll grow on siru, lava, in the substrate. It sends out trailers, and its roots are like iron. Uh, let's see. Hi from Norway. Do you have any experience with Cheerios? 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 Cheerios, right? Cheerios. Cheerios lights? Cheerios A series. Is it a good light for no CO2 planted tank? I find, uh, I only, I've only been using the 12 inch one, the 30 centimeter one, and it is very powerful, very blue heavy light. Uh, I've seen it sold, the same light sold as a light for salt water as for planted. But it's very powerful. I would not use it without CO2 unless you get risers that raise it up, you know, about 15 to 20 centimeters. Uh, Low Light Aquatic says, just going to throw it out there, that patience is hella important for algae. It's not going to go away in just five minutes. That is very no, true. Unless you do the one-two punch. Yeah, well. <laughs> unless you just drop a nuke in the tank. And pull. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what I had to do last week. Yeah. Um, I want scientific evidence on what Kevin is saying. <laughs> Jake is such a troll. Jake, I'm going to kick your butt in my next time I see you. I normally treat algae successfully with more water changes or less lighting. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, essentially, when you have algae and you do a huge water change, you're pulling out tons of nutrients. If you're using CO2, you're pulling out dissolved CO2. You're increasing oxygen. Uh, these are all things that, you know, help algae speed up. Um, and then also less light. Uh, once plants can outcompete algae for light, then they don't grow as much. But uh, let's see. Where you go? Oh, you're gonna. You want to see what he said? Jake is the worst <laughs> plant grower. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Jake, stop picking on Christian. Yeah, he's answering questions. Jake, <laughs> quit being a troll. <laughs> yeah jake oh jake J jake's he probably gave him a timeout so i removed all his messages uh so mary um the stems i bought do i have to plant them or can i leave them as floating mass so you can leave pretty much every plant as a floating plant in your tank um and they'll actually adjust a little bit better because they're closer to the light so they have all the energy that they could possibly need um at the very beginning and then you can uh plant them when when you have the time so would you agree or disagree? Do you strongly agree or strongly disagree with this statement? <laughs> <laughs> so BBA could be too much nutrients, Ella asks. I find that uh, the easiest way to get BBA is a lot of nutrients in a high flow area. Um, cut down the flow in that area. Uh, think about how you're fertilizing, what you're fertilizing. Sometimes BBA just happens. I, I, I get it. I, I can't figure out how I get it. Um, a lot of light. No light, BBA likes everything. I like to pretend that it's kind of like coral where it feeds in the flow. So 
the easiest way to get rid of BBA, you do uh, hit it with peroxide, turn off the flow, hit it with peroxide for about 10 minutes, let it sit, hit it with some Excel, and it'll be gone. Uh, you know, if it's in a high flow area, look around where the flow is going. It's like poison ivy. Uh, do not scrub it. Scrubbing it is. It's like poison ivy. It'll just spread it. So either pick it off or chemically attack it. And nothing really eats it except for, I guess, uh, black mollies I've seen eat it. Sometimes a mono shrimp. It's, uh, it's just nasty stuff. Well, no, blackbeard algae, I've seen reticulated flying foxes eat it. Uh, well, yeah, I'm thinking nano tanks, sorry. Yeah, well, well, yeah, I guess mm. uh, they're not. They're like 20 gallon minimum, but reticulated flying foxes eat it. Nerite snails supposedly eat it. I've seen, I've seen videos where they eat it. I don't know if maybe they're just starving to death and that's the only thing that they can find to eat. Or I've never, I've or never seen a nerite eat blackbeard algae. There, there's videos on YouTube. Of it. I know. I've seen I, it. I just don't believe it. Yeah, I just, I've never seen it personally. Um, then again, I just saw all five families of algae uh, in one tank for the first time in my life. So you know, was, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Uh, let's see. I know, Walter. I like you too. <laughs> Um, three hundred seconds. Yeah, he timed him out for three seconds or three hundred oh. seconds. So Ellis says I have never had such a bad problem with algae until I made a planted tank. I mean, if you were just doing a fish-only tank, you're probably using a bare minimum light so that you can just see the fish. Uh, finding balance in a planted tank is one of the hardest things. It takes a lot of practice. Some people, for it's years of practice trying to figure out how to get the balance. Um, Typically, a good way to go when you're first doing a planted tank is do lots of plants. Always the, do lots of plants. Don't, mo- don't be yeah. sparse. Don't. If you're if you're only doing like you know you have a ten gallon tank and you're doing like one plant here, one plant here, one plant here, and you have a lot of open area. It's only because what what winds up happening is you're you've probably increased your light to something that can grow plants and now you have just three plants in there and there's all this photo radiation that's coming down into the tank that is not being absorbed by the plants because the plants can only absorb so much. So if you have three slow growing plants, all this radiation sitting in the tank water and that's when algae starts to form because algae is going to maximize that opportunity to use all that energy that isn't being used by the plants. So if you plant heavy and it's fully filled out with plants, you know, you get a bunch of stuff, put it in there. So you can't really see, um, you know, like empty substrate or just open water uh, too much, then that will cut down on that ability for algae to grow. But also there's a balance. You have to, you have to allow time for the algae because the algae is, I mean, I don't think there's any way to start a plant to tank without growing algae. I mean... I don't, I don't. I don't think if you set up a brand, unless you use tissue cultures, even then I think you'll still get like green water or diatoms at some point. I don't have a problem. No, you. Ne- so when you set up a brand new tank for the first time, you oh, for ne- the first time ever. For ever, the, ever. that's what I'm saying. Like if you oh, set up. Oh God. Yeah. Expect to fail. Uh, very few people uh, do very well. Um, with their first tank. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm like, when you first start up a brand... I was reading ahead. I'm okay. Sorry. No, <laughs> when you first start up a planted tank for the first time, yeah. there's going to be that out... It's like a curve. So you're going to you're gonna plant the plants. You're going to have all these things. All of a sudden, it's going to be a curve. You're going to get algae like crazy. And then it's going to start balancing itself out. And then it'll eventually decrease to virtually nothing. Not on its own solely. I mean, you will have to stay on top of it, like cleaning the glass, wiping off algae if it forms. Um, but eventually, it kind of works its way out. Um, but normally, it, normally get uh, diatom algae. Yeah, normally. normally it's diatoms. That's that's guaranteed. Blackbeard forms over time. I feel like that's not right away. Yeah, that'll take a couple weeks to months to form. I feel a lot of uh, new planted tank keepers uh, don't seem to understand that plants produce a lot more waste than, say, fish. Fish. Uh, I mean, you have plants that are that are in a constant state of growth. And they're shedding leaves, they're shedding cells, they're creating waste. Um, roots die because they don't like going in places they shouldn't be. And this is another thing real quick to harp on too. When you have plants and you're just putting them in your tank for the first time, they're going to be adjusting. So they're going to be losing a lot of leaves. Right. <laughs> they're going to be losing a lot of leaves like Kevin said. Here's how you have to think of it. Algae is like a, an infection on your skin. You get a cut you don't clean it it's going to get infected that's the same way with like leaves on plants if they are damaged or melting they're more prone to getting algae uh on them 
So, you know, you that's going to be expected when you first set up a plant to tank because plants have to adjust to your stuff and then the algae is going to kick in if you don't do proper cleaning. That's why I like trimming older leaves is good, doing water changes, gravel vacuuming uh, up any dead plant matter that's, you know, on the on the substrate is good good practice in the very beginning. Strongly disagree or? I agree. I agree. Okay. You're doing fine. You don't need me. I, I'm, I'm uh, proud of you. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, Dad. I always wanted to be like you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's see. Let's spend a weekend in Rikers first. <laughs> <laughs> MK Films. Why is shipping so much for just two stickers? I actually have to adjust that. It should be less for the two stickers. It's just because of the way my system works on the website. Uh, I kind of just figured that people would order the stickers with plants, and it would just kind of be like you throw them in the box kind of thing. If people just want to order stickers, I have to figure that out, and uh, maybe I'll just make them like free shipping and adjust the price to cover like postage on a regular envelope. I don't know. Um, who knows? We'll figure that out. If you just want to order stickers, message me. I'll set you up with a custom invoice. But, yeah. Uh, two Phoenix Stingrays on a 33 long. Is that highlight? I would consider it probably highlight. Medium. Medi me medium at, at the very least. Yeah. It's definitely not low. I mean, the Stingray is a lot brighter than people think it is. And the tank is really short. So you have this much water to go yeah. through for a light. I mean, you could put any sort of bulb on that, and that would probably be a highlight situation. That's why 33 longs are nice. I like them. I want one. I want actually a couple. Mm. They're nice tanks. I, I went to a fish store and they had uh, miniature reefs of just 33 longs. Beautiful. I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. I want them. They're easy to work with. They are. They're super, like the dimensions are just so nice. Especially if you're using a lot of red plants where you don't have to have, you know, get that nice sunburn going. Yeah. Uh, cause that plant to turn red. And it's like you could get like a nice piece of like spider wood that like goes throughout the size of the, you know, the length of the tank. I can already hear in your, your voice. Kevin, will you Kevin, you want to uh... escape a 33 long? <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, I don't get algae even in my one gallon beta tank, mainly because I have some anacris in there to suck it up fast. Uh, at least I think so. So... If you have like a, um, a vase or a small tank and you don't have a strong enough light, algae pretty much won't grow. And anacris is a super fast growing weed essentially. Like that will grow in anything. Um, so you really, it, you know, it's not like you have it in a direct sunlight environment that you have light pounding on it um, that would cause algae. So, because I, I have the shrimp vase upstairs that doesn't get any direct light. Plants are still growing because it gets ambient light, but it's not enough for any algae to grow. But when I put it inside of a, one of the windows and it was getting direct sunlight, uh, hair algae started growing immediately, like within days. Are you doing there. Any water changes? No water changes. We don't do water changes around here, Kevin. We went over this. You know, I got I, I'm one of the goldfish groups on Facebook. Somebody said, uh, you know, they were like, oh, I have three goldfish and I'm doing constant water changes, but the water it tests out fine and whatever. And I'm like, and you know, she's like, uh, how many times do you do guys do water changes? So I comment after everybody's comments, and I'm like, I don't plants for the win. And then my comment got deleted. <laughs> and so then I had to go into this long, elaborate uh, explanation. Do your water changes. Don't be like Justin. All right. Yes. Do, do your, your water do changes. Do your water changes. Don't be like me. However, there is some possibility of not doing water changes. What do you, do you think fish release hormones into the water? Like, yes. like, but like, I don't know. They were saying like that the goldfish release hormones to stunt their growth or something. If, if you don't constantly do water changes or some shit like that. I don't know. I don't know. They, uh, they were like, oh, it's a theory. It's not uh, scientific. Fish are not my, my expertise. Okay. Uh, so we'll I just leave I try not to that. give advice on fish. I'm, I'm wrong sometimes or. Well, I'm sure that they release hormones. That's not what I meant. I mean like the, yeah, they, their whole thing uh, of it. They're like, oh, well, it's a theory. I'm like, well, if it's a theory and you can't prove it to me, then how do, how are you going to tell me that my, my method is wrong? Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't even sound like a theory. It sounds like, you know, trying to. You know, produce causation into a theory. It doesn't sound yeah. like there's any actual data collected. Yeah. I just use the word theory. I guess so. I don't know. All, all I know is I got maimed for not doing water changes on my goldfish tank. No, it's okay. It's but but all the levels show zero. 
No nitrogen, or no nitrates, no nitrite, no ammonia. You also have a mammoth filter, but those, uh, they'll still build up, and eventually you'll have a problem, and then well, your tank will crash. Yeah, but we're testing every week. Okay. So, when we see it get out of control, we'll do a water change. It's, it's that Anubis, bro. Is that Anubis? No, it's the floating plants, actually. The <laughs> Probably the floating plants. The floating plants are just yeah. absorbing all of it. Anyway, moving on. That's a that's another topic for another video. <laughs> Me beating up Justin. Yeah, well. <laughs> Who wants to see that? We should get some votes on that. <laughs> uh, do you think it is possible to grow blackbeard algae in a certain section only and make it grow safe? Well, what do you mean make it grow safe? I mean, I know people who have grown algae as part of an aquascape. There's a great video of, uh, looks like a grass lawn, and it's goldfish nibbling at it, and it's actually uh, algae. It's, a, it's actually a beautiful it's, scape. A blackbeard algae can look good in the right environment and the right way. But when you have little patches growing every everywhere, and they're just, you know, then it doesn't look good. Right, like so, Christian's beard. Yes, like Christian's little prepubescent beard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, Sandy, to answer your question, I've seen people make a, um algae scrubber where essentially it is um, like, um, I don't know, they use like this weird container on the side of their tank. They point a, um, like a clip on like directly onto that part of the tank and then it grows green algae to make it so the rest of the tank doesn't grow algae. I don't know if it will make it so the rest of the tank doesn't grow algae, but they have a, a heavy concentration of algae in that particular area and that'll prevent it from, I guess, spreading in their mind. I don't know if it ever does. I haven't tried it. I haven't tried it either. I don't have it. Yeah. Uh, are all aquatic plants started emergent? Instead of submerged, and if so, what's the best method to eliminate the brown algae from both methods? No, not all. No, there's a lot of plants that are 100 percent aquatic, uh, aquatic, like the, the Blixa family. Um, what else? I mean, any of the lilies you can't really grow immersed. No. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, not very well. Yeah. Um, so no, uh, if you have brown algae, uh, cut it off from the leaves, hit it with peroxide. I'm pretty much going to give this advice over and over again. The solutions are really simple. It's just about patience. It's about water changes, patience, light. Holy crap, we have a ton of questions here. I don't even know if we'll be able to get to them. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. All right. I do agree though that uh, one gallon is too small for a beta. Oh, why somebody commented that? Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say it's probably a little too small. Um, unless it's like a juvenile beta, but even then, you, you definitely want to try and get up a little bit higher. I'll do this one. I tried peroxide and it bubbled and still there. Ella? Uh, Ella, you just gotta, you gotta hit it over and over again. Do it before water changes. Um, I, I, hopefully you're using uh, a syringe. Uh, take your time. A little bit at a time. Uh, it's, it's all about just a little bit at a time, hitting it up. Uh, if you're doing it in between water changes, do half the recommended uh, dosage. So just hit a little spot every day, a little tiny bit, and uh, eventually it makes sure the flow is off. Don't hit don't hit algae with peroxide unless the flow is off. Let it sit for a couple of minutes. Uh, the cellular breakdown will actually spread as the peroxide breaks down in the water. Yeah. Uh, Robert, to answer your question, or well, to comment on what you what you wrote, if uh, if there's any issues, just let me know. Um, it's moss though, so it should be fine. Even if you don't get it for a day, I think it'll be okay. But just keep me posted if there's any issues with that. How do you propagate jungle val or val in general? Uh, they send out runners, pretty much. There's you don't well, you might be able to propagate their flowers and seeds. Maybe I don't. I've never tried it. I know Sounds that they like do, an awful lot of pain. Yeah, they just propagate their runners. I mean, you could probably collect seeds and regrow them from that. I've never tried it, uh, but they just send out runners, and you just plant it, leave it alone, and within week, a couple weeks, you'll have new new runners growing, as long as you have the right uh, parameters for it. Sometimes I've seen valves, they just get really big. They don't send out runners, and then I've seen the opposite. They stay really small and send out tons of runners. I have to be honest, the last time I had valves in any tank I've done or for myself has been years. I got these really cool Nana valves. Have you seen these? No. Check this out. This came in. These are the coolest looking valves I've ever seen. Whoa. 
super tiny, almost look like giant hair grass, but they're not. It's all Serenetta, huh? Yeah. Hmm. I'll have to watch out. <laughs> super tiny leaves. This is a new come. By the way, uh, if anybody hasn't seen the website recently, there's about 30 or 40 new plants that I added, both like uh, 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 new variations of old plants and uh, new plants like this. So this is, um, I don't want to drip this on my... <laughs> Kevin weighs too much. Um, this is a Valicinaria nana that came in. It's a super fine-leafed val. I really like it. No, I like it. I'm I, was thinking, I was thinking about throwing in uh, the Shelly tank. Or maybe uh, the, the little three-gallon, Ultim three-gallon, do like a little mini scape. It's possible. It's possible. Kevin broke it. You asked me not to do. Told you not to step on it. You stepped on it. You did. Sorry about that. The audio went out there for a minute. Okay. Yep, we're good now. <laughs> Kevin broke it. Uh, somebody with a five dollar super chat. What's this? Uh, Ella says, "Thank you both for all the advice. I'll beat it." You're welcome, Ella. And yeah, j algae just takes time. It takes a little bit of patience, but eventually um, it'll work itself out. And you can you can uh, definitely uh, hit me up on Facebook. I'll see if I can help you any way I can. It's a little easier if you can send me pictures and well, see what you have going on. His Instagram link is in the description of the video. So if you want to ever talk to Kevin, Brooklyn Hardscapes on, um, on Instagram. He likes to know what you have for dinner. He loves food porn. <laughs> That's not a lie. <laughs> <laughs> really? I was just saying that so a bunch of people send you pictures of their dinner. I mean, I like food. <laughs> you see the size of my, my belly? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Damn, we're at 40 minutes already and we have freaking all this still? Mm, no escape tonight. No escaping tonight. Well, we'll have to do that for a future thing. No, I can do it next week. Yeah, next week we'll do a uh, live scape. We got the, uh, the over there, the 10 gallon scapers tank, right? That's what it is? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. Hmm. Famous Jones, hello. What's up, Famous Jones? Uh, hey, Justin, you gave me the idea for my next tank, the Fluval Flex 15 gallon from my bedroom. Plant order to follow. How is the light growing plants? Uh, the light is uh, awesome. The water spray has tripled. What, what, what's with that face? It's growing know. plants great. I don't like the light great. Anyway. Listen, it, it's growing. It's growing Monte Carlo. Yeah. I it, mean, it, it's definitely it's a low-tech tank. But it's uh, growing. Mon it has Monte Carlo, Hydrocodal, the Crips, the Anubis. Um, if you guys aren't uh, familiar with what we're talking about, because there was an issue this past Sunday. So I uploaded a video. I thought it was what I rendered out. It wasn't. It was a section of it unedited. So if you watch the video on Sunday, that wasn't the real video. I uploaded it this morning, the right one, because I didn't catch it until yesterday, because that's what happens when somebody's angry at you and it's like, get off the computer and come spend time with me. Happened, so. It wasn't me, it was his wife. <laughs> yes, it wasn't Kevin, <laughs> but it was my uh, neglected wife that um, was rushing me through my upload and I didn't realize I uploaded the wrong file. So, um, yeah, you could go back and watch that. We did a video on the flex tank that's set up right there. And that is the shell dweller tank that we set up. It's planted. But the light's working great. No CO2 on it. And it's growing plants uh, very nicely. So literally everything I put in there has not died. So, you know. And, I mean, it does have some algae growing on it. But that's just because I haven't done anything to maintain it other than just a couple water changes. Um, and that's it. And yes, I did water changes on it. Well, and by me, I mean Jake. Jake, did. Jake did. <laughs> well, that's because they do better. They breed. Uh, you got to keep their nit uh, nitrates low, and there's not enough plants in there to off balance that. Especially since I'm feeding them so much. Um, if leaves are dying on the edges, what could be the problem, or what could the problem be? Well, it depends on the plant. So normally, it's uh, some kind of nutrient deficiency. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, unless it's a new plant and then the leaves could have dried out in shipping or yeah. planting. Or just uh, old leaves could be um, dying off. Okay, you know, old old plants shed leaves. Like you won't if there's leaves from a year ago, they may be damaged from some sort or just going through issues. So trim them off, get rid of any any leaf that's giving you a problem. It's just like anybody with long hair in their shower. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna find lots of stuff discarded all the time. This is true. Uh, how do I propagate a nacris? Cut the top and plant it. Uh, yeah, you can pretty much just cut it into a bunch of pieces. If you want it to really propagate out, literally take it up and dice it up like a freaking carrot. Right? Yeah. 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 As then, long as you cut in between the nodes, you should be fine. Does it even have nodes? Yeah. Well, yeah. the leave nodes. Yeah, I already got it. Well, I mean, but it's like they're at least dense is like this much space in between. Yeah, nodes, so. so. You get spring yeah. scissors. Yep. I actually saw a really cool video on Instagram earlier of Pothos. This guy, he took a, 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 a string of Pothos and he cut it all up in each node and then just took all the nodes and stuck them in a little jar of water and within two weeks they were all rooted and ready to go and then he repotted it and it looked like a huge new plant. I was like, that's so cool, I want to do that. <laughs> I want to do it with the Wandering Jew upstairs because I have so much of it. Oh, that plant, I have to show you that, it's gotten pink in, in direct sunlight. Yeah, it turned in pink and purple with silver leaves, like silver. Well, went stripes. from the went from the purple and green with the silver stripes to now like a vibrant light pink. It looks so much, so I mean, much. Mine's nicer. like violet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, mine's like a light pink. It's, well, we're not gonna see whose is redder. We're just not compete about that. Oh no, we're competing against it. Uh, I get no. algae on my plants. I don't see it on the glass, but I have at least thirty snails in each tank, and they seem to do a good job at cleaning the plants. Snails do a good job. Um, Nerite snails take care of um, brown algae a lot if you have a brown algae problem, like uh, diatoms. Hello, Victor. <laughs> Victor's in here. <laughs> What's your favorite algae? <laughs> he would ask a question. Because he's a jerk. Like that. <laughs> uh, what's the best color spectrum for Nubius ferns? Thanks in advance. Uh, okay, first rule of light. Understand that white light is actually all light. It's an equal distribution of all wavelengths of light. Um, you get boosts when you add reds and blues and greens. Uh, all right, after that fact, uh, I like oh. to have a blue heavy light under ferns and anubias because they're green and the blue complements the green and makes it a little brighter to your eyes. So when you have something like very green plants, a bluish light is perfect. Uh, I got some mollies, and they took care of BBA real quick. Yeah, yeah. mollies, uh, flagfish, Siamese algae eaters, reticulated flying fox, not regular flying fox, a mono shrimp. Oh, I forgot about flagfish. Yeah. They breed. Oh, I had an algae problem, and then I let them eat all the algae, and they just kept breeding for me. That's a good problem to have, no? No, oh, it was terrible. I fry everywhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, I just found some Anubis bonsai at Petco. What? Really? Are you sure it's Anubis bonsai? Because that's rare. And I know that because I just paid like $40 for a small piece of it. <laughs> <laughs> sure it just wasn't small or uh, malnutritioned? Yeah, like did it specifically say when bonsai? Unless somebody, unless like they have Somebody traded it. Maybe. Got some store credit? Do they even trade plants at Petco? I don't know. I haven't been to Petco in a long uh, time. Yeah, me either. Well, if it is, keep it. Yeah. And sell it to Justin for about $50 a quarter inch no, no, cutting. No, 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 no. I give you, I give you $5 a cutting, right? 50 No, no $5. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what, if you give me 10 I won't help him keep his alive right. so they'll all die on him. Listen, my Anubis, <laughs> my Pinto looks better than yours. How about that? We'll see. Did you see mine over there? I see. Yeah, that's great. Uh, what's up, Challenge the Wild? Uh, my Nerite snails eat all algae, BBA, GSA, and any other. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. Oh, we're going to call it beautiful people. Yeah. It's mainly towards me, but... Well, yeah, I'm old. I use guppies for BBA. Do they eat blackbeard algae? I've never seen them do it, but... Uh, I, I mean, I guess they... starve them, they might. Yeah, I guess they pick at it. Maybe enough constant gnawing at it will make it so it's like, you know what, screw this. Don't want to grow here. Mm -hmm. 
My dwarf lily pads do here Friday. Rumor the rock wool is toxic to fish. I've never had an issue and have three large Anubis sitting in it now with 55 fish. No issues. Your advice? Wait, somebody... In, is Did the seller post that the rock wool was toxic? You shouldn't have rock wool in there. It's a nutrient magnet. It, uh, it'll definitely store it and cause algae. Uh, I understand that with some places you use a lot of fertilizers when they're growing the plants immersed and the rock wool will absorb it and pesticides and fertilizers can be stored in the rock wool, wool which is why it's always suggested to remove it, but the rock, rock wool itself is not yeah. poisonous. Somebody says they do have Monzai Anubis at Pekka. We're going to be taking a trip to Pekka. Because guaranteed they have it for like $10 probably. I'll buy all of it. Be like, all of that? I want it all. <laughs> Give me or it Or is all. it just being named that? Well, yeah. That's, -ish. That, that's that's the other case. It could be uh, misidentified as... It could be like Nana Petit and uh, they just named it Bonsai. I mean, I remember seeing uh, Christmas moths at Petco and I got excited and I brought some home and it was uh, Rickia. Oh, God. Uh... Well, that, that, I, like from one of the nurseries, they have dwarf sedge, or they have a plant labeled as dwarf sedge, which it's narrow leaf sedge, it's not dwarf leaf. It's oh, really? Not, yeah, it's not. Even though they, they like, they, the scientific name is Sagittaria sublata, but it's not. It's not the right one, so. Well, there are some rumors floating around that um, Walmart and PetSmart and a couple other companies are going to get a little bit of a boost in uh, aquascaping. No? So we'll see what happens in February. Interesting. Uh, hmm. I am tired of worrying about algae. I focus on growing the plants and hope algae will disappear in time. That's usually the best way to do it. I mean, you can't completely ignore it because if it starts taking over, but if you only see minimal amounts of it, uh, focus on growing the plants and that will usually help offset the algae growth. Because algae really only attacks dying plants or plants that aren't doing well. Uh, or moss. Well, yeah, or moss. Or moss, because, you know. Yeah. But, like, if you have a stem plant and it's growing on one of the leaves, it's normally because that leaf is old, it's dying, it's just not healthy, and that's, you know, why it's being attacked, essentially, so. Oh, Mike's on uh, Instagram. Mike's Fish Tanks? Yep. Mike Bernard. Oh, that's his, his account? Yep. Yeah. Uh, My boy, trapped in the south, should be in the <laughs> north. I have a piece of Mopani spanning my 33 long, algae stunting my flamingo crypts, so should I go down to one stingray? Um, well, I would say if you're getting algae that is caused by too much light, definitely. How long is your light on for? That could be the other thing. Take your light down to six hours. Yeah, so many people, they run it at like eight, 10, 12 hours. Like, I run mine at eight. We we do have some algae, um, not string out. Not typically string algaes, it's mostly like diatoms and stuff, which I don't mind cleaning. Um, but yeah, six hours is uh, good for getting rid of any sort of algae growth. Um, I did a water change once, plants died. Now the last five years they don't, and plants are growing very well. I only do tap, uh, top off. I'm not getting into this argument. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to have to wear shirts one day that says water change and anti-water change. I mean, I had a Wallstead tank. I had a 55-gallon Wallstead tank. 252, two 250-watt two, 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 two halide bulbs on it. I did four water changes a year in a sump filtration. Um, thing thrived. It was a lush tank. It was beautiful. I had a gazillion fish in there. Until one day I came home and my house smelled like a sulfur bomb went off. And what had happened was I had gotten a whole bunch of methane built up in the substrate. Uh, I guess my fish disturbed it and it caused a giant fart to go off into my apartment. And it was the middle of winter and I had to open up all my <laughs> windows for like six hours. And it was awful. And I mean, I think there's still pictures on my Instagram of this, this tank that I had running for five years. <laughs> And four years. But now, do you attribute that to no water changes? I mean, it, I attribute or, it to just not cleaning and no water changes and overstocking. and There was a lot. There was a lot of reasons for it. Okay, so it wasn't directly caused by no water But changes. cleaning this mess up and deciding whether to rescape this tank, I decided, screw that. <laughs> I'm going back to high tech. 
I'm happier. I, I won't have a methane bomb explode in my house. I don't know. I'm happier with less less water or less maintenance needed. Period. Um, I have six tanks and I do water changes faithfully every week. I have a 29, 38, 75 gallon planter, 110 gallon, 135 gallon, 150 gallon. Jesus, thinking of making a 135 gallon of planter tank also. Ella, you're a beautiful person. Yeah, Ella, you are uh, you are a trooper. I want to get a. See, I'm I'm debating on what I want to do over here. It's either going to be a 75. Or the 75. I don't know. I have the 90, but I don't want to set up the 90. I don't think I think the extra whatever six inches tall that it is is such a waste. I agree. Deeper is better. Well, a 75 and a 90 are the same footprint. Right. Right. But I don't like the extra six inches that the 90 That's adds. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So shallower is better. You said deeper is better. Oh, deeper. Well, they're the same depth. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't with him. Uh, what's the play best place to sell fish? I have some exotics that I'm thinking of selling. Uh, Facebook groups, fish clubs. Is Aquabid still active? Aquabid's still active. Yeah, Aquabid. eBay, if you want to risk it. Uh, I mean. No, stay away from eBay. I would say, honestly, stuff. Facebook groups. Yeah. Facebook groups are probably the best. Because forums, I feel, are dead. Well, Aquabid, so... Well, Aqu Aquabid would be the only exception, but I don't trust anybody on there. Really? Yeah, I just don't. I don't know what it is. I just... The, the site turns me off. That's what it is. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, let's see. How do you propagate banana plants? We were just talking about this. <laughs> because, That's why I was laughing. Because other... <laughs> we're just not going to go into it, but other people did not know how to propagate banana plants that should be uh, plant experts. You can split the rhizome. Uh, there's a video on it on YouTube. Or you can take the leaflets and plant them and they should sprout roots if you cut it right. Yeah, essentially you cut the leaf all the way down by the base of where the bananas are. I've seen you can either float it and it'll grow roots or come in saying you can plant it. I've never tried either method, but I've seen people that do float it and it grows roots. So... New Elio Acris. Well, I got the we so we had the one giant hair grass kind of mislabeled. The scientific name was off. It was actually by vi, 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 how do you say it? Viperia. Vivipara. Vivipara is the true scientific name. No, uh, no, I think it's wrong, but I, that's how I say it. Don't, okay, I'm well, terrible. What, yeah, whatever. So we 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 changed that around. So that's what's on the website. Uh, yeah. Oh, and the other worry is wool gets contaminated with toxins slowly and gets released into your tanks. I guess that's in response to the we're so far behind. Yeah. Damn it. Somebody's, uh, Ellis Pitbull gets a steak for his fourth birthday. It's a lucky dog. I want a steak. <laughs> Thanks, Famous Jones. He says he uh, saw both videos. Thank you very much. that uh, I feed my wandering Jew clippings from my frogs tanks to my turtles they love it oh really hmm. interesting what's up something to do about nothing that's an interesting name what's your guys's favorite co2 diffuser or reactor oh well that's a uh, for nano tanks I would have to say uh, definitely I'm a big mr. aqua fan I've been noticing that Mr. Aqua is making a little bit of a resurgence. There's still a couple places that sell it. <coughs> um, there's a bunch of other companies. I've had a chance, unfortunately, to go overseas and buy a bunch of stuff and come back with a bunch of stuff. Uh, so I've been, I've been spoiled. But uh, Doe Aqua, uh, ADA is overpriced. Don't get, ever get ADA stuff. Uh, they're, they're Cow Aqua, uh, if you can find it, Probably not from GLA because GLA overprices stuff. Uh, let's see where else. It's a long list. Uh, there's a lot of alternatives for stuff. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to go into some shops and shops that, that would have something have it for cheaper. Uh, also, a lot of people uh, go to the, the Facebook groups. They'll try it. And they don't like the Planet of the Tanks, and they'll try to 
to sell stuff pretty cheap. Yeah, a good way to score some uh, planted tank goodies is the Facebook groups. People are constantly selling things like regulators, CO2 tanks, anything. They're selling it. And uh, they're selling it at usually a, a pretty good discount because they're just like, I just need a gun. Just take it. Also, Rex Griggs style reactor. Uh, can't beat it. Uh, That's Rex, what... Rex is the man. Uh, he helped me out a lot when I first got started. So... That's what we got on the rack over here. That's what I'm using for CO2 distribution. On the uh, on all the other tanks that get CO2, I'm using the atomic inline diffusers. Uh, they work great. I haven't figured out, though, if there's a real big difference between the Rex Griggs and the atomic. I haven't figured you out if... The reactor? The Rex Griggs reactor? Well, that's the... Yeah. yeah, that's the reactor there. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't figured out, though. Like, I haven't seen... A Do you have the, the balls inside? No, no balls. I should have got the balls. I needed the balls. I needed to put balls in it. <clears throat> Whatever. Uh, I've been growing peace lilies in some kind of vine I have underwater. They have uh, submerged since October and are doing great and growing well. Nice. Uh, the peace lilies, if they're completely submerged, will die and they'll rot. And they'll put the, the rot will mess with your tank parameters. Well, their the roots can be in water. The water, yeah, the roots can be in water, but the actual rhizome has yeah, to be above yeah, the, the water. Yeah, the, the rosette or rhizome, I don't know what they, I haven't actually, I've done pot mine and repot it because it's got like five plants on there now. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. So. But yeah, you can't, you can't grow that stuff completely underwater. It will not last. Uh, and when it goes, it goes fast. So, yeah. Uh, but you probably have like pothos, which is really nice. Um, I have some of that. I actually, terrestrial plants are going to be, you should see my Amazon cart right now. It's literally like 15 <laughs> freaking terrestrial plants. I'm just like, I need these plants in my life. Uh, something to do about nothing. Yes, you can You can email me photos of your tanks. I'll see if I can help you. Or me. Either one. Or him. Uh, Whoever you think's prettiest. It's definitely me. <laughs> Tammy wants to know what type of glue do you use to attach moss to rocks and wood? Uh, super, glue, super glue gel is what you want to look for. But use very sparingly. Yes. Like only a little tiny bit, get a spray bottle, glue what you have to to the rock, spray it down, make sure it, uh, it hardens, then put it in. Yeah. Uh, su putting too much super glue can actually kill the plant or moss <clears throat> because you basically will drown it in, in glue. So be very careful. I almost killed all my rare moss like that when I was gluing it. Put a little too much on there. Mm, I figured out how to grow a banana plant by accident. One banana came off and grew another banana plant. Well, I guess that's another way to uh, to propagate it out. Just break off the bananas. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, breaking up the rhizome. Oh. No, okay, okay. And in my head, that was splitting it. You were just splitting it in half. I mean, you can... Uh, Whatever. I mean, this plant is, is popular <laughs> in Missouri in the lakes and stuff. Like, it's got to be tough. Everybody I know from Missouri is tough. Oh yeah, they grow there. I've I've been in a pond with nothing but banana plants everywhere. I think we gotta go there and collect. First live sign since I've quit this account. Oh, sorry, life of pets. Uh, can I grow plants in place sand? I, gr I got place sand in my tank. Yes, you can. Uh, just keep it fertilized. It's all about the fertilizer. Plants need food, just like you. Plants need to eat, just like you. LED for plants. Uh, Fluval 2.0s are nice. It uh, depends on how much you're looking to spend and what size tank. Yeah. All right, so we are about at the hour mark here. Went by really quick. It really did. Really did. I never got to escape the tank. Next Wednesday... Well, what's next Wednesday? I didn't even get a chance to talk about my clients' tanks and some of the problems. Though. Yeah. Well, unless you are you in a rush? Oh, okay? uh, it's up to you. You're you're in control. Oh, that's, so tonight's my night. Yep. I mean, I got a. I should have a little bit of time. Let me see. Unless I'm being summoned by somebody, let me take a real quick look here. Anybody on here from Brooklyn? I don't know there's alternate street parking tomorrow. Uh, I don't want to turn on my phone because I have a client calling you right now. Uh, does mini pelia grow better when you keep it near the surface like you do with the other moss? Uh, kind of, uh, yeah, 
it, it's grown so slow for me, Mini. It just grows slow. Yeah. I would say that... Uh, I have it at the water surface, and it's still... Parva and uh, Ricardia, they're, they're, I love them. I love them both, but I don't like scaping with them because they just take so long growing. Yeah. What wattage do I need for my aquarium for my 22-gallon 11.9 inches? Are you looking for a highlight? Or all car all carpet plants need medium light. What? Oh. Who's asking about carpet plants? I don't see carpet plants. Um, on a 12-inch tall tank, you really anything will give you a decent amount of light. Um, it's not that tall, so. What plants are uh, good for betas? Oh, well. You can go crazy with betas. There's so much. As long as they have one little spot that they can use as shelter to rest in, and the flow isn't too strong, uh, go nuts, honestly. Uh, low tech, just fill it up with Java and Trident Fern and maybe some, some Pinto and Golden Anubius. Like, colors and just really jam that stuff in together. Uh, I think the best beta tanks are the most heavily planted ones. Especially ones that complement their body shape. Uh, which is why like Anubius always seems to be a good fitting or maybe one of the ferns like uh, Hygro Pin or Water Sprite uh, or one of the mini Bulbituses. Pretty much anything. And sorry, yeah. I'm going to eat if we're going to extend this because I'm hungry. So we're going to go over the time limit. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not hungry. Dude, I, there's another slice. No, I'm not hungry. I'm uh, telling you, I eat turnpike food. It's making me feel a little uncomfortable. Uh, it's okay. If I pass wind, you're right here. Is vital... Oh, my God, no. <laughs> don't make me puke. Is vital safe for shrimp? So, as long as you don't overdose it, yes. But, with that said, if you definitely want to stay safe, I sell another fertilizer called Drive S, which is 100% shrimp safe. As long as you don't like dump the whole bottle in your tank, it is uh, it is a much more diluted formula and has zero traces of copper in it. Therefore, it is pretty much impossible to kill shrimp with it. How would you scape a six-gallon beta tank? You want to scape the uh, ten-gallon? We could we could do that now. Hmm. I'm sorry, my mouth was full. In an ideal world, how would I escape uh, a beta tank? Six gallons? Mm. I think. Uh, I don't even know. I don't really keep betas. Betas aren't really my thing. Uh, but probably just something pretty cool with maybe a little immersed rock work, work with a bonsai doing a cascade towards the water. Okay, if you were somebody that wasn't Kevin Kelly. <laughs> um, root tabs are shrimp safe, but what I would say as far as escaping a beta tank, uh, you want to stay away from any rocks or wood that have sharp edges. Their fins will get caught on it, uh, especially if they're male betas with lots of finage. Uh, but other than that, lots of plants. Uh, do you follow a beta world on Instagram? No. Okay. She has betas uh, community tank, and her tank is just full of plants, like Packed to the brim. Well, yeah, you gotta get rid of line of sight, get them rust places. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> like, literally, like, it's, like, to the front of the glass. Like, that's how much playing. Nobody's ever like. hired me to uh, escape a, a beta tank, I have to be honest with you. I've only ever kept one beta, personally. Uh, I like little fish. Beta's little fish. I like little fish. I like, like... Microspores. Big guy and a little fish. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. Now, now you got my brain thinking. We should we should do a beta tank, even yeah, though I don't have should. a beta. It's got to be high tech. So I want to go nuts. Oh my god, no! Whatever you want. <laughs> Make me sound like a diva. Where's the best place to get big bigger pieces of driftwood? How big are we talking? Because I have big pieces. I just don't have them up on the website. <laughs> Worst part of moving to New Jersey, Domino's Pizza. <laughs> this is very true. 
Although I don't mind Domino's Pizza, but there's way better in New York, of course. Oh, yeah. There's a lot better. Favorite nano fish? <laughs> Which one? Huh? Which one of us? Oh, me? Oh, God. Microspores. Always microspores. All of various kinds. I couldn't choose one. As long as I get a entire school of one species, that's that's what I want. Mic microspores. Uh, I love them. Especially when you get like 30 of them, 40, 50 of them together. Um, even even the CPDs that you have in your tank, when they're, when they're swimming together, you get enough of them. It's, it's just beautiful. It's a natural habitat. I will give credit to Rachel O'Leary because she's the one that kind of changed my opinion about that. I used to go for like good medium-sized fish, like five fish, you know, like four fish, you know, maximum capacity for a tank. Like, oh, it looks pretty. And then she changed the way I was thinking. Big tank, little fish. Yep, always. I'm hoping sometime in the near future to get a 120, uh, 120 centimeter tank and just fill it up with the smallest fish that I can find. We might do that. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you located? New York or New Jersey? We're in New Jersey. Do you breed uh, fish? Dog attack. Yeah, dogs. Do you breed fish? Me? Yeah. I don't. Uh, that's why I partnered originally with uh, Christian G. Uh, he's he's more talented with fish. Uh, I am not. Uh, I don't even get to choose my own fish anymore. Other people do because <laughs> I've made such horrible decisions about uh, the environment that I've built for the fish. I'm more of a hardscape plant guy, and then I work with people to find the fish to fit or build uh, scapes to fit the fish that my client wants. Uh, has Kevin ever got his hands on Bora's Micro? Yes. What is that? Fish about that big. Is it? Is that? Are you talking about like I mean any of the, the Bora's Micro? That's a whole. That's an exclamation point. Uh, Rasporas. It's uh, chili Rasporas. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What are easy to grow beginner plants? I want to do a heavily planted Altum Angel tank. Well, I'm imagining you'll probably do a tall tank because it's Altum Angels. So you'll probably have at least a 55 gallon, maybe bigger. 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't do Altums in anything smaller than uh, 75 or 90. Yeah. Um, oh, Boris. Uh, I would do. Oh, I know what talking about. Okay. I, I would do large swords. I would do large uh, Anubis. I would do. Uh, large crypts. Um, and then, For Altums? Yeah. I mean, Altums come from Blackwater. Well, the, uh, I mean, are we doing a biotope here? If it, you want to see natural behavior, sometimes it might be a lot easier to create... 72-gallon uh, bow front. A lot of woodwork. I would do a lot of woodwork with uh, a lot of low-tech low plants, about... 12, 10 inches from the water surface and just fill up the whole plant line and then leave the whole bottom bare if you really want to see some nice some nice behavior from the fish. I thought you weren't the fish guy. Well, I've been lectured about this before. <laughs> I'm repeating somebody else. Thank you, Oliver. <laughs> you have to cite it. <laughs> sources. Oliver cannot, you know, this is what you said. Here are my sources. Uh, yeah. My, bu my bulbitis disformis uh, rhizome rotted away. Any suggestions Suggestions if I get another? Flow. Rotted away? If, if, I heard they like lots of flow. Yeah, a lot of flow. Like lots of flow. And don't mess with them too much. Once you put them somewhere, keep them there. Yeah, just leave it. Like I, um, in the 55, I have this big mound of bulbitis. I actually have to throw in. I got the micro now. Or I have micro coming. And I have mini now. I have bulbitis mini. So I want to throw that in the 55. Oh, and Bracton, if you have any, I'm interested. Oh, what, the small micro mm. thingies? Yeah. Another live stream with him, Cool Beans, Killer Shark says. Thanks. Yeah, if you guys uh, want Kevin to be on more live streams, make sure you leave us uh, comments, uh, give us topics you'd like us to discuss in future videos, and... Uh, stuff and hopefully we could get them out here each week that's what we're trying to do it's just uh it's expensive 
it's just uh, expensive. We're talking in, talking about a couple ways that we can help him out. Uh, maybe doing like super chats will go to him. Maybe uh, since Kevin's an artist, he could do artwork, and you guys can help support him coming out here by buying. I don't know. Either we do prints on posters or t-shirts or hats yeah, I, mean, I have or a whole, whole bunch of fish and shrimp drawings that i've been working on so yeah, yeah so yeah, you, you what you need to do is you need to bring your notebook do you have it no. i have i have some notebooks i have my travel sketchbook bring it he's got some really nice artwork so i was i was thinking a way we can help uh, oh phone fell sorry guys <laughs> on instagram <laughs> so what i'm thinking to help him uh cover his travel costs because he Let's see, it's probably at least $40 in gas and tolls? Yeah, probably a little more. A little more? Kevin's sketchbook go up. Let's see. It's all, you know, it's old stuff, but... I haven't been drawing much. Now that I got an <laughs> iPad that I draw in, it's been a... <laughs> so, uh, Kevin's got some really nice... Let's see, this is what, a cat? Yeah, it's a so, cat. Some of them. I mean, this is just something really... It's just a quick study. Quick photo but the GoFundMe I don't want to do a GoFundMe I don't think Kevin wants to do a GoFundMe nah, either nah, nah. we just want to you know that like if, if we set up like a some sort of site like a I like that one yeah this one's a really nice one so like if we set up something where you could buy like either digital prints or we put this on t-shirts and um that's dead fish that's for you oh this is a, this is for me <laughs> it's upside down Oh, is it? You know, these are. This would just be ways to help fund Kevin, so he can make it out here a bit easier. Cause this is my my travel sketchbook. It's not my final stuff. Yeah, yeah. He he's done some really other cool stuff. This is just you know he showed me this a couple weeks ago when he was here. Just some really cool stuff. So, as they can, we could set up like a either a uh, Teespring or something like that. You know, he could do uh, designs every couple of weeks, and you guys can su help support him coming out here by, I don't know, purchasing a couple of them if you like anything. Plant it. Is that... Like, like that? Yeah, I like that. Oh, uh, yeah, it's for a tattoo design that I did in the study. Yeah, that's another one for that tattoo. So just some really nice artwork. Yeah, maybe I'll do some, uh, some shrimp and stuff. I'm not yeah. doing that one. No? I'm finished. No, i got a long way to go. That looks done to me. No, that's not done. No? Looks nice. No, that's that's it. it? No more? Yeah, I think All so. Right. Okay. I'm going to do my testicles. Oh, look. The Han sticker in here. <sighs> Mess you up. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. I'm going to feature him in a video of, oh, there of, you go. of the plants that I'm getting from him. Uh... So yeah, so hopefully, I mean, if we if we do work that out, maybe we'll have uh, we'll have that on uh, a site for him. What are you trying to get on the Instagram? <laughs> Is that where you're just trying to smell me? <laughs> Your hair product smells so nice. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I'm sitting next to a pretty girl. Uh, let's see. Um, what do you think about people trying to take away net, net, bet neutrality? Uh, net neutrality. Shit sucks. I think it's hogwash. Hopefully it doesn't go through tomorrow. But it's going to go through. Yeah, it's going to go through. Yeah. My water wisteria is growing quite lovely. Should I propagate it? Um, if it's getting too tall or big, yeah. Plants grow better when they're trimmed and pruned. I agree. The, most plants can, heavy, it can handle heavy trimming. So. <laughs> what is hard to grow a beard or white anubias? <laughs> Uh, uh, depends on who you are. <laughs> Where's Christian? Is he still on? <laughs> uh, my bull body died when I went in harder water. Hmm. Maybe. I recently got a 125. I'm looking for a tight schooling fish. What would either of you guys uh, use? I'm looking for different opinions. Thanks. 125 green neons. I personally, so we got we got the Celeste Pearl Danios and uh, in the 55, if anybody hasn't seen that video, you could go back in the channel and watch that. Um, but they aren't the most, uh, the most um, so social. social, yeah, they don't, although they have been warming up to me more, like they don't hide as much, but they still like, you walk by the tank, they, they all like 
scatter and try and find somewhere to hide. So I wouldn't recommend those, but um, Tetras are a good one. They don't typically do that. Uh, what about, uh, like, chili reservoirs? I mean, yeah, if you can get 150 chili reservoirs, please, and then take pictures and send it to me so I can drool in your tank. <laughs> Um, what's the best CO2 diffuser brands or type? I think we kind of went over this earlier. Yeah. Uh, Steve, go back in the video probably about halfway through. We, we were talking about it. Uh, speaking of small fish, have you guys ever kept scarlet battis? Yes. Uh, I love scarlet battis. Uh, I also have a, hat, a very sad story. It's really hard to find females. I'm still looking for females if anybody has any leads. Uh, it took me a couple years to finally get a nice six of them and then I got a dragonfly larva in my tank and it wiped them out. It's one of my saddest fish keeping stories. I, I keep seeing dragonflies over here all the time. They come in on the plants then they get up out of the water. Are fly. you serious? Yeah. No, it's serious. Oh, the that's larva why, are the worst, that, man. That's why I have the bug catcher over there. Yeah. No, the, the lava the, will wipe out a whole tank. Mm -hmm. uh, even damselflies too. Their larva are really... The nymphs are really nasty. They'll kill your fish if they're... A small fish, fish, yeah. yeah. Nano fish will they'll definitely wipe out or fry. Uh, let's see. So Brackton says, "Stop it, dude! Those are great for even final works." No, stop. <laughs> Do you sculpt or have any other type of art? Uh, printmaking, sculpture. Uh, I try to dip into whatever I can. Yeah, Kevin has some nice artwork, so maybe that'll be something that we'll do. Um, if you guys are particularly interested in something like he said shrimp so you know maybe he'll do like a shrimp shirt maybe a beta shirt yeah goldfish we can do that. stuff like that and you or just a design maybe a poster and then that way it would help offset his cost of coming out here because like we could do this remotely but kevin doesn't have a computer so well yeah it, my computer just died and i just haven't yeah, yeah so it, it doesn't really work for that so like being able to help him make it out here every week would be nice because i i like the streams when it's me and him it's more entertaining i feel so um yeah uh play a question hey hey uh play a question have 20 gallon tank in my classroom with platies and corys with dwarf sedge water sprite do corys and platies eat the sprite sedge doing well not the sprite how long has the sprite been in there Tammy says she votes 100% for you coming back. And the artwork is amazing. There we go. I have hard water. My Bobotis always dies. Hmm. That's the same person saying that? Or is no, that the third, di different. third comment? Third, wow. Yeah. So I guess Bulbitis does not like hard water. It's new for me. What uh, What do you consider hard water? What is that? That's GH? General hardness? Yes, mixed with GH, yeah. What would be a hard TDS? Mine's 400... Uh, 200 out of 10. That's low. I think it starts getting hard around 256. Yeah. But in general, I find that... Well, my tank's 350. My, my 55, where the Bulbida says, is 350 I don't find a problem. I think almost almost any plants can, uh, can adjust to hard water. Yeah. Uh, the thing, too, about Bulbida is it just takes a very long time to grow. So um, if you don't start off with the healthiest batch... It'll just die because it's eating its own reserves and then it yeah. slowly uh, rots away. Yeah. Uh, Jeff says he will send us a photo when he sets it up. I have two neon tetras because they were dying off. One of them is absolutely crazy. It keeps on swim swimming all over the tank. Hmm. Uh, I don't have an answer for you. Yeah. I don't know. That's strange. Uh, coaching says that the water sprite's been in there two months. So there's probably something off, uh, maybe parameters as far as the water spray, although it's it's relatively easy. I have it growing in high pH. I've had it grow in low pH. So I wouldn't be able to pinpoint it. However, what I would try and do is float the water spray, um, let it like just sit at the surface of the water. It may come back um, because it grows from its existing leaves. So to produce new plants right from its uh, existing leaves. It gets up to 700 in my tanks. Damn, that's crazy. Sorry, dog hair. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, the 15 gallon with the shell dwellers, what are the dimensions? That is, I believe it's 14 by 14 by 13, I think. The tank I gave you? No, the, the flex. They haven't seen the other tank. Oh, right. Yeah, the other tank is uh, it's a mystery. Mm. Best CO2 diffuser. Uh, depends on the tank. 
Uh, nano tanks are one thing, medium sized tanks, large tanks, it's all different stuff. Uh, large tanks, you go reactor. Uh, medium sized tanks, you can go inline diffuser, or I like to use Mr. Aqua diffusers. Uh, they're cheap, they're durable. Uh, nano tanks, also, I do Mr. Aqua. Uh, any, anything with a good diffusion. Sometimes there are companies out there you can get the six seven dollar diffusers on uh on amazon and you use them and they don't work because the bubbles are each the size of a bb and throw it away it's useless you just wasted your money so uh, going to local shops uh or testing uh doe aqua uh, has always treated me pretty well um viv there was a while viv was really cheap on ebay and on amazon so, uh, like VIV, uh, as long as you can find deals, it's all about, I, I, I'm, I'm a bargain hunter. When I get up in the morning, I have a list of things that I'm looking for that I need cheap, and when I go to bed, uh, I check Amazon, Craigslist, uh, planettank.net, uh, anywhere I can. And uh, then I just hoard when I find stuff for cheap. Uh, I just picked up some, I don't know what that is. Pi Pi oh Pi yeah, the purple bamboo. Yeah, the purple bamboo is great. I love it. That's an uh, aquatic plant, or that's a it's an aquatic plant. I like it uh, as uh, like a almost a vivarium plant. Like I like to grow it immersed. It's just like red bamboo. It looks beautiful underwater and looks just as beautiful immersed. Uh, it's a skinny, tall uh, stem plant. Uh, I love it. Uh, I gave up on water sprite. Couldn't get it to take off for me, floating or in the substrate. Hmm. There's got to be a parameter than that. It doesn't like some mm -hmm. case. But I have it in both high and low pH. So maybe uh, like a GH or KH issue that uh, could be off. Yeah. Uh, started an ADA 45P, 10 gallon with coral moss, Monty, and Walichi. Two weeks old. Any advice to brown algae? Uh, time. <laughs> time, blackout, uh, light. He uh, has a Kessel. A Kessel might be too much. It might be. <sighs> Why do people keep buying Kessel? I don't. <laughs> well, he might have had it left over. Nah. Um, Benny's dosing thrive. Okay. So, well, what I'm uh, what I'm gathering here, yeah, Monte Carlo, which is probably transitioning still. Same thing with Wally Chi. So they're not absorbing as much nutrients as they probably would if they were already growing and thriving. So you're probably dosing too much fertilizer, and then also the Kessel's probably way too much light on that. I mean, I, I would dim it down. I have a Kessel on a seven gallon, one hundred and sixty. Yeah, but he just started it. It's only two weeks old. That's why. That's why he would be getting. Uh, do, it, do the Kessel full brightness. Uh, do it a, a ramp, uh, ten minute ramp to fifty percent power, then go two hours into full power, two hours of full power, and then two hours of ramping down to fifty percent, and then ten ten minutes to the, the ramp to go out. Yeah. It, it's uh, probably the light because it's a new tank. So if he just set it up, yeah, it's it's two weeks old. Um, how do I stop dwarf sedge from overrunning my tank? So I pull out all the runners, but can't seem to slow it down. Uh, that's a good problem to have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. It's, uh, I mean, it's it's you, if it's grown fast, you're doing something right, and uh, you <laughs> might as well just let it carpet. Yep. Just let it fully carve it out and go where it wants. Uh, the only other thing that I can think of that may slow it down, I don't know if it would actually work, is trimming it. Because you would effectively be destroying the existing leaves by doing so. It's much like Val where it doesn't like to be trimmed across. So if you trim off the leaf, you're going to kill that leaf eventually. So therefore it'll die back. Yeah. Almost. Okay. I'm going to leave you here. Uh, I guess I'll just keep doing this. Uh, where are we? Any good for fish stores in New Jersey? I have no idea. I'm a Brooklyn boy. I don't like leaving Brooklyn. Uh, four leaf clover is not growing in my 55. Any suggestions? Uh, famous. Uh, there's a couple of plants called four leaf. I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, I'm assuming it's the four leaf that Justin sells, which I don't know where they are. Uh, how long has it been in the tank? 
I guess is the first answer. And how are you? I guess picture. I guess there's any way to do pictures on these. Guys, I'm a ludite. I'm not very good at this. How do you propagate? Torsage carpet is awesome. Yes, it is. Uh, propagate valves is simply uh, cut the runners, replant it until it multiplies. Yeah, definitely with the dwarf sad, just cut it. Every time you see a runner, just cut it. It'll eventually start curving back onto itself if you can train it. Yeah, the seems to be the popular question of tonight. My favorite CO2 diffuser, uh, depending on the tank. If it's a large tank, I'll use a nano, or not nano, a uh, reactor. And if it's a smaller or medium tank, I like to use Mr. Aqua diffusers. Did you take my seat? I did. What the <laughs> hell is this? I wonder if I'd jump in your grave just as fast. There's an emergency. The light bulb went out. Well, she could have stumbled and fell in the door. I, I thought she was, like, going to have birth or something. I, I thought the wasn't... chair had gotten here and we had to move it in. Yeah, well, that too. All right. All right, kids. Okay, uh, so we're going to let this go on five more minutes. Is that good? All right. I was trying to pop out as many questions as possible. Oh, do you get through them all? Uh, valves grow runners. You trim the r runners and... Did you answer that question about any good fish stores in New Jersey? I didn't know any good fish stores in New Jersey. That's your, your uh, hood. Fishtown, USA, um, and Absolutely Fish. Absolutely Fish is more expensive. Um, they do have a wider selection, um, and their stuff is pretty good. Which uh, four leaf clover do you sell? I sell the Cronada and the Menuda. I, no, Cronada and. I gave quadrifolia. Them oh, the quadrifolia. Yeah. Uh, then I'm assuming you probably have the quadrifolia. Yeah, the larger species is quadrifolia. Uh, it, it might need more light. Yeah, it's it's relatively a low light plant. Like I had dwarf four leaf clover in the 55 growing with like no light whatsoever. Um, but it could just be like water parameters and stuff. It may just need slightly more light or just give it time. It does. So if you don't have high light, it grows super slow, but it doesn't die. So if yours is dying, then there's a problem. Well, it's a 55. There's very little gas exchange. Right. And uh, it's very deep. Yeah. Very deep. So even if it looks like you're getting a lot of light, it's not. Yeah. Uh, remember that when light hits the surface of water, it immediately diffuses out. Uh, so by the time you get about 18 inches in the water, you've lost most of the EMR uh, energy in the uh, the light to, for plants to effectively use. Have you tried Fish Hut in Saddlebrook? Uh, maybe. It sounds familiar. I might have. I'm going to need a tall person to change a light, by the way. Because I don't feel like I'm going to have to get a ladder. Okay. And you're... 6'5". Uh, yeah. Work. More vertically uh, gifted than I am. <laughs> okay, later Killer Shark says we definitely got to do more live streams with Kevin. Oh, I feel so popular. You are. So popular. It's like I'm at prom all over again. <laughs> You're the popular kid. <laughs> <laughs> and there's dogs fighting under my legs. Yeah. Hey! 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 Oh my god. Can't. This is one you just need a spray bottle. Any uh, last Instagram questions? Let's see. Uh, you guys are backwards on this feed on YouTube. Kevin is sitting on the right side. Yep. The feed on the Instagram is different. What's an easy carpeting plant for beginners? Monte Carlo. Uh, Monte Carlo, four leaf clover, dwarf sad, dress repens, all those are good. You guys do discus, like keep them, etc.? I do not. Uh, best starter plants, Anubis and Java Fern. If you can't grow those, you can't grow plants. <laughs> Kevin got an Instagram? He does. It's Brooklyn underscore Hardscape. It is also on my stories. You can go there and uh, join it there. Or, yeah. Yeah, that'll link out to you. Alright, guys. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um... You can follow Kevin. Link is in the description for his thing. 
Instagram thing in my bottom. Um, uh, Jalen. I broke the microphone. Did I break it? Oh no. Okay. I don't know what happened. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for checking it out. We will be um, live streaming next Wednesday. Hopefully, Kevin will be here. We'll see. We'll see. It all depends when I get done. Uh, it's uh, the holiday season. Everybody wants me to fix their tanks before uh, the family comes. Yeah. So I've been so busy. You want to fix my tanks before the family comes? Are you having family come? No. <laughs> no. Mar Margaret's like, I want to go to the Bahamas for Christmas. I don't want to have any family around. Uh, I'll go to the Bahamas with Margaret. Uh, about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as you're paying. Uh, yeah, I, I thought you were paying. Oh, man, I'm an artist. I mean, I mean you, got, you got four people that want you to clean their tank. Shit, I wish I had that amount of clients. Yeah, but I live in Brooklyn. I got Brooklyn to rent to pay. Oh, this is true. <laughs> uh, how do you propagate bulbitis? Just cut the rhizome, and that's it. I mean, I just leave it all intact. It grows. Yeah. But, um, all right, guys. So, uh, we'll see. Well, I'll see you next Wednesday. If Kevin's here, he'll see you next Wednesday. If not, possibly the Wednesday after. And uh, don't forget 25% off the website. Use the code PLANTMISS. Also, check the daily deals for uh, the PLANTMISS sales, $1 to $3 plants. Uh, what else? I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, you email me any questions if you want. And his links are down below. Oh, and like 35 new plants on the website, so check them out. Like, there's a bunch of new ones. So, I will see you guys on the next one. <laughs>